Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, the light of the moon is growing. We are moving through the final energies of the eclipse portal of energy, and we've just passed through the 1010 portal, aligning with the master vibration. Inclusions, new beginnings, often seen as a cosmic gateway. This day is believed to be a time when the universal energy is particularly potent, making it an ideal time to manifest your intentions, to seek abundance, and embark on a path of spiritual awakening, all of which reinforces the eclipse energies we've been moving through. In numerology, 10 is a number of completion, which also reduces down to a 1 new beginnings. So the spiritual impact has been intensified, heightening your energy to help you step forward on your path. The key now is to hold that vibration for you, have patience with yourself, and to allow the physical layers to catch up and do the work needed. This cosmic energy where the earth, the constellation of Libra, which is the sign we're in, and the star, Occutaris, unites to create a powerful energetic window. I've been talking about the energy of the Occutarians. This annual event provided us with an opportunity to align our life's purpose, recalibrating your destiny, and embrace new pathways with clarity, courage, and and grace. With the energies of balance and destiny and justice from Libra, protection and guidance from the Akitarians, and the numerological power of 1010, completion, renewal, and alignment, this portal has opened a gateway in confirming all this energy coming through for personal and spiritual transformation. One of the ways you can work with this vibration to help you actualize it is working with crystals. One of the ways you can work with this vibration to help you actualize it is by working with crystals during this time. It will help you deepen your connection, feel into those vibrations, and help you step consciously and confidently into your purpose. And guess what? Crystals is the subject on the podcast today. Are you looking for a deeper understanding of this new energy for you? Are you feeling disconnected from your purpose in life? Deep within us lies an inner strength, a wisdom that embodies our individuality and core passions. We all have our own unique vibration and imprint. And this is our soul force. It is a vital aspect of who we are, an intrinsic part of us that demands to be expressed. We can't leave it at home anymore. We need to show up wholly each and every day. And are you feeling overwhelmed by your racing thoughts? Are you stuck in the monotony of your daily routine? Do you sense there is a different way to navigate life, but you're not quite sure how to find it? I've been there, lost, confused, and feeling utterly alone as if there was no escape, sleepless nights, and a lack of appetite 
became my norm until one pivotal day 27 years ago when I was introduced to a teacher who worked with the transformative energy of Reiki. That experience changed my life. I was reminded of this journey recently, as I've shared, during an interview for Women's World magazine, where I shared how discovering and learning Reiki helped me manage my anxiety, empowering me to make better choices for myself, and most importantly, for my children. It's significant that such a well-respected mainstream national magazine chose to highlight this topic, reflecting how important it is to bring integrative therapies into public conversation. We need this integrative approach, like Reiki, to help us manage our stress and struggles in life. If you're ready to shift your perspective and embrace change, I invite you to schedule a complimentary spiritual upgrade call with me. Let's explore the number one thing, keeping you stuck in your old patterns. I'll include the link in the show notes. In today's episode, I speak with Marie Delanote about her latest book, Ethereal Crystal Healing. She takes a different approach of working with crystal energy. Ethereal crystals are vibrational tools created for humanity to help raise its frequency and assist in the ascension of human consciousness. Her book aims to bring an awareness of these vibrational energies that foster enlightenment and also helps encourage you to raise your vibration to create a life of health, happiness, success, and abundance. Before we begin, let's take a moment to pause breathe and set an intention to lift our vibrations and hold the light for your manifestations so wherever you are if you can close your eyes taking a nice deep inhale breathing up the body and as you exhale call all your energy into you slowing down Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. Exhale, breathing all that energy all the way down, slowing down. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, begin to align your energy, calling in the spiritual body to align right on top of the emotional, the mental, the physical bodies centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body, and exhale, breathing all the way down. Bring in the awareness right into the deepest part of your heart. Right in the deepest part, feeling that connection. Your spirit, the greater spirit, source, creator. Know that you are loved guided, connected, provided for, feeling all this energy coming in around us as we take the time to notice this great wheel of life calling in our Reiki masters, calling in the archangels to open the heart with joy and love calling in the crystal beings to come and surround us with amusement, magnification, calling in your higher self right above the crown to receive the messages and guidance for your path, your light. Taking another deep inhale and exhale as we honor this season. As I teach, we find ourselves in the direction of the west where the sun sets where the beautiful colors remind us of the cycles of the day and night of life, where we harvest our work and we notice, calling in the directions for guidance and protection to the west, the north, the east, the south, above us, below us, back into that deepest part of your heart, setting an intention to hold these vibrations for your path, your manifestations. Feel and see and hear and know. And allow the elevated emotions, how you want to feel, to release all around you. 
setting the energy of your aura, holding that vibration, taking another deep inhale, breathing up the body, and exhale, feel the heart open, feel the illumination of your third eye, and as you're ready, blinking the eyes back open, coming back. Transformational teacher, multi-award winning writer and entrepreneur, Marie Delanote, was born in Flanders, Belgium, moved to the UK with her British husband and their children in the year 2011, and since 2020, lives with her family in Ireland. Marie studied double bass at the Royal College of Music in Belgium and played in the orchestra of the Royal Opera House in Brussels. She stopped playing professionally when she decided to be a full-time mom to her four children. As an ethereal crystal master, she helps people to connect with the intelligence and guidance of ethereal crystals, transforming energy between people, the physical body, mind, buildings, earth, past life, and family circles. Her company, Ethereal Crystals Global, brings products into the world that supports people in raising their vibration and in turn, transform their life. So let us welcome Marie to the show. Welcome, Marie. Um. Thank you so much for having me, Terry. It's wonderful to be here today. I'm excited to talk to you. Crystal is one of my favorite subjects. I love them. I have them all over. I teach about them. And I have to say, I just got the book and it is absolutely gorgeous. The pictures, the illustrations, it's so exciting to see this come to life. So congratulations on your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'd like to ask the question, just to start us off, what led you to writing this book right now? It's actually a book that's been in the making for quite a while because when the topic was brought to me by one of my guides, it was so exciting. I think I actually started writing bits and pieces about it quite shortly after that. So let's say it's been 10 years in the making, even though I've brought two other books out since, that's how long it's taken. But it needed time to evolve. It needed time for me to actually really deeply work with ethereal crystals to really understand them. And it's about two years ago that I really felt I was ready and that it took more shape and real form of what had to be in it. And we went from there. And now two years later, we have a beautiful book. It is. It's just beautiful. So yes, yeah, sometimes it does take a while to pull it all together, but it has so much information. And I love that you've taken the idea, not just talk about crystals and the property, but the whole idea of vibration and energy, the ethereal. How did you come across that? Like what led you to really recognizing that in crystals? Not everybody does. Of course, it starts with simply the message that it came through, how to work with ethereal crystals. Um, before I actually fully understood myself the, how important it was and how important it is to work with vibration and how at the end of the day, everything at the core of everything, it is frequency, it's vibration. So it started about, I think, 12 years ago now when I was giving a one-on-one -on -one healing session. And normally I wouldn't even give crystals to people, but in that moment, I really felt that my client needed crystals so I asked her to just to hold some even though they were my crystals and as I was giving the crystals to her I got the guidance saying what if you now imagine that energy that crystal inside her heart because this lady had lost her husband so there was a lot of grief that had to come out and I was like whoa this is so strong because the second I guided the energy of that crystal in her heart it was absolutely amazing. And she could literally feel it within her, how it was vibrating out, the warmth of it and the energy of it. That's how it really started. And from there out, I was quite taken aback for how, how powerful it was. But it's only as the years went and my life happened and I learned more that I started realizing how important it really was and what it really means of working with the frequencies of crystals because it's at the end of the day, as we are entering the Aquarius era, we're going back to what we truly are. And what is that? It's vibration. Because the physical crystals 
even though I love physical crystals, I have them myself and they are so powerful and so amazing, but they are still part of the old consciousness. They are still part of the physical limitations because they have a certain limits. They have a physical form and the ethereal crystals really bring us into that new consciousness. And what is that is beyond the physical. And that's what we are. We, we, we are not just this physical body or this table that we see or this wall. It, it's so much more than that. And that is the real message the ethereal crystals bring is to go beyond the physical form. And that's what we are. Yeah, let's stop for a moment because let's clarify that for our listeners because I think that we have the physical, but I think part yeah. of the physical is the ethereal. And so I do believe that it still contains vibrant information for today as well because they're living, okay. breathing, growing from the universe. I don't think they're separate though. You're not saying that, right? I'm not saying they're separate. No, it's a okay. different consciousness. Yeah, it's a different consciousness. We're still going to find an amethyst in the world. We're going to find it in the universe made from the fire, the air, the earth, the water. But you're talking Absolutely. about the vibration around it that it holds. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because okay. at the end of the day, what, what, how we can say it as well is the ethereal crystals. So the, the um, let's say the physical crystals we have in Mother Earth, they started in the ethereal world, and we can create more of those crystals in Mother Earth because loads have been taken out because we're mining them, because we want to have them. But when we do that, it loses certain vibrations in certain places of the Earth that need it. So it doesn't affect us as positively anymore because we're moving it. And of course, it loses certain of its qualities the second we take it out because of the machinery we use, because of the way we transport the crystals. What we can do is, and that's where the crystals come in, and that's originally how the physical crystals were formed as well, is that we tune into the frequency of crystals and we can place it in Mother Earth. Now, vibration frequency is number one step in the creation process. So when we put the vibration of that in Mother Earth, the next step is vibration becomes energy. And it's the energy that determines the physical outcome. So if we started with channeling a amethyst vibration into Mother Earth, eventually we will grow new physical amethysts in the Earth. So yes, they do not stand separate, the physical and the ethereal crystals. The ethereal crystals are simply the source of what it is. And that's what we're going back to, is the source. It's the source of what we are. Where did we start? Not in this physical body. We started as a vibration, which became an energy because we were pulled in because of someone who wanted to create this in the physical world. And eventually it became physical because its first vibration becomes energy, determines the physical outcome. And so, yeah, I think we're speaking the same way, which you're just saying it differently, because some people will say, oh, you can't change any structures of the crystals. They are what they are. But I think one of the things that I do in my work is what you're talking about is I help my students call in and attune to what that what that etherical energy is. And so we honor the earth and we bring in, as we did in our opening, like with you and I, calling in the crystal being energies. So that helps to align with the energy. So it's not just becoming the physical. And I think sometimes if we apply it to ourselves, many people think we're just physical, but it's the same concept. We have that etherical energy around us, the vibration and energy, which we can't forget and we can't not acknowledge. So I think you're saying the same thing. We have this beautiful etherical energy of the crystals that you're addressing. It's not just the physical. But we're not going to go out there and just, well, although, you know what? I apprenticed with Cindy Dale, and she was the one that taught me that you can call in the crystal beings. You don't have to have the physical being, exactly. but you could call in. So that's, that's what you're saying as well. That's exactly it. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That helps explain it a little bit because I'm thinking, what? <laughs> but I see what you're saying, and that is the work that you're doing, working with that vibrational energy. What is the essence of this crystal being? I know I talk about this all the time about... When I first started working with crystals, actually, I first started learning jewelry. So it was beads and walking up and down Sixth Avenue in New York. And it was really just the beauty. I had no idea. 
But that led me into the spiritual development that I do now and understanding more and more about that energy and vibration. But it is important to sit and hold the crystal and learn how to recognize that resonance that we have. So that's where your book is starting off at. That's what you're talking about. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's again, knowing that you have that power as well, that you are one with that world of those crystal energies and it's just one thought away and you can draw it in yourself wherever you need it and that's the magic with it because the physical crystals and that's where I'll talk about limitations you can't place a physical crystal inside your heart or inside your stomach or between two people to help heal a relationship but you can do that with energy because it's energy it it goes anywhere that that you want it to go and that's very powerful when you can draw in the vibration of a crystal and place it between two people to help transform the vibration the energy and eventually the physical outcome and that's very powerful and so we're going back to what we truly are and where do we come from it's frequency yeah i agree and sometimes i see where people just want to collect but they don't recognize what they're collecting, right? It's just like the physical parts, right? The physical stones. But yet the idea of really tuning in and really even honoring all the elements that they come from and honoring, like you're saying, to the earth. I went on yeah. some, I went to Arkansas here in the United States and did some crystal mines. And you could see the different mines that had been really exploited and taken away versus the ones that were really nurturing the land and nurturing the energy with which they come from. So I do think that's important too. So I do think it's an important distinction for our work today and what we're doing. Mm, absolutely, yeah. And I think it's that's one of the big points as well. Don't get me wrong, I love physical crystals. They're gorgeous and they do beautiful work. But we've been exploiting Mother Earth and it's all these crystals, it's her vibration that she's putting out there to help the lands, to help the people. And if we keep taking it out, it's empty. And she can't give anymore. So she needs to, it, it's like a mother. If she always gives, she's exhausted. And that's nearly where we come into the whole balance of um, the giving and receiving. As females, we need to receive. And that's another part of the new era we step into, to the era of the females, of the, the female energy, I should say, of that receiving and Mother Earth really shows that to us. You know, she's exploited, she's empty. As women, we, we can't give anymore because we haven't been receiving. And so if we start receiving those beautiful energies from the universe, the universe is like male, it gives us that. And we receive them, then we can create again. And when we create, well, we can give more. And it's the same for the males. They can't give anymore, they take not all of them, obviously, this is just really generalized, but many of them take because they can't give anymore. And when they can't, when they, they take because they haven't got anything, they can't receive anymore either. So we really need to rebalance this of the females that receive to create so they can give. And the male can then receive and he can create and he can give. So we have this really beautiful circle that we can reinstates that we can find out again and as you can hear me i say the feminine receives the male gives but at the end of the day he, we also need to give and the male receives so we both have it in us we both have male and female within us all at the same time so we're yeah. all one yeah, and Mother Earth does too. I agree with you on that. And I think there's several ways to look at that. I was out in Santa Fe, and when I landed in Albuquerque, went up the back ways, which was the old turquoise mines. And most of the turquoise, like you're saying, has been mined. They're, they don't have the new turquoise mines anymore. Right? They don't have turquoise coming in the old mines anymore. I should say it that way. So there is a case right there where we aren't finding that. Yet you go to the gem shows, and there's new crystals coming around all the time. So that's a fascination that there is that replenishing. And it is representative of what you say, too. There has to be a switch. There has to be a balance coming through. So I do think it's important that we understand where they come from and how we do work with them. And we don't just take. I think that's really important. Yeah. yeah. And recognizing that energy yeah. that we can access. And like you said, we are vibration. Everything yeah. is energy. Yeah. 
And I think when I found out you could just call in the crystal beings and you could feel their presence, I think that was an amazing way to start working with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The thing is as well, we wouldn't take if we realized what unlimited beings that we are, because it is unlimited the amount of crystal energy we can channel in it will continue coming and then we can create unlimitedly and then we can give unlimitedly so that's the the realization that comes with that as well that we truly are unlimited beings so we don't need to take because if we receive we can create we can give and it's a beautiful process it's all there continuously it is all there continuously. And I think Mother Earth, yes, yeah, she needs that giving and taking, but especially the giving right now. But she is very abundant too. And so we keep having that relationship, but honoring that relationship, I think is what's really important. Yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in your book, you talk about 33 different ethereal crystals. Tell us a little bit about that and how you chose them. It just was channeled because funny enough, someone asked me and said, why 33, Marie? And I actually said, I don't know. That just came through, 33. And it was only afterwards I realized it's the Christ number of Christ, 33. So it's a very powerful number. But just so many um, things, knowledge, wisdom in the book was channeled. So it was an amazing journey for myself. As I said, it started... 10 years ago that I started writing things, but eventually many parts of the book, and it always came through when I was driving, so I didn't have to record it. (laughs) So many of the parts have been channeled in the book. But that's 33, it came through, and it's only afterwards I realized what a powerful number it was and what it actually represents. It is my favorite number for sure, yeah. So as you're speaking, I am looking at the book, because like I said, I just got in, the photographs are just absolutely beautiful. And the way in which you lay them out, they're so pretty, nice photography. And one thing that you do put in are the, I would call them the auras. What do you call them? The ethereal energies of the crystal showing. And you had a photographer do that. Yes. Yeah. So the pictures, because I have to acknowledge our amazing photographer, Els de Vogelares. She's a Belgian lady, Belgian artist, who's very much in touch with the crystal energy. And it was another thing. I had no idea who to ask to have these stunning pictures taken because I didn't want just images. I wanted it to be really representing the energy of the crystals in the photographs. And I asked the universe and three months later, I was guided to her. She's made absolutely stunning images for the book. And each and every book has been empowered. The the images have been empowered so people can really draw the energy from the images in the book so I made sure of that to help the process now the other ones you were mentioning the aura of the crystals I also wanted to show so people can see with their physical eyes that that every crystal has an aura has colors is alive it's not just a stone because that's the first step to then how would I say to believe not to believe to understand that the ethereal crystals are real. So I, again, I had no idea who can take those pictures, but I was guided to it. And then I found the lady in the UK through someone else who were talking to people. She was guided to me. And she takes images with special equipment. Uh, She's called Biofield Imaging in the UK. And she takes images of crystals, of auras of people. So she can see depending on the colors, depending on how the lines are, what is going on within the body. So it's a different type of her healing, but of course she then made those images of the crystals for the book so people can actually see what vibration is and it can be seen with the physical eye that way. Yeah, I agree. I have been actually teaching more and more with pictures of aura showing people. I work a lot with empaths and showing how their energy fields open and how they take in other energies. So I think it is important that people see it. As we were laughing before, like our cell phones, we don't see all that stuff coming in, but we trust them so much. So it is the same with crystals. It is the same with our energy field. And it's very important that we begin to recognize just because we can't see it. And many of us learn how to. So that is shifting and changing, but it's still happening. It's still there. I think that's a really important aspect because I don't think we need to separate that out anymore. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. But that's part of the process, isn't it? The the process of our growth 
of our understanding when that goes with ups and downs and with ha things happening and then we do things, we try things, we see the results and then we trust more and that's how we all evolve back to really knowing and understanding that even though we don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah, I agree so much. I really do. And it's just so important that we start to recognize that there's more than the eye can see. And now with neuroscience and quantum physics, it is backing up a lot of this information coming forward. And then with these kind of cameras and now the biofeed machines and technology is coming forward to see that. I was recently leading a light and crystal meditation. And so projecting light, which is, I love to do, just project the light through it. It helps us to understand a little bit more of that vibration. And there was a nurse there who had on a health app on her watch. And she's like, yeah, I kept noticing like how my heartbeat was going down and down moving through the meditation. So I think that's important for us to recognize. It really is. So you mentioned a story that happened with your daughter. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, about 12, 13 years ago, nearly. She was born at 24 weeks pregnancy. At that time, it was borderline whether they were going to help her or not. If she was born eight hours earlier, they wouldn't have helped her. So it was really on the cusp of 24 weeks. And I understand why. She's so small and there were mm. so many risks and so many things that the physical body isn't ready yet. Her brain hadn't unfolded yet. She couldn't breathe on her own. She was full of bruises, which meant there was bleeding, but we didn't know where it was. So there was a very complicated start of, of life. And for me, that was a real moment of, and now you will trust that everything you've been doing for the past 10 plus years really does work. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other story of where I got to really apply everything I knew to this tiny baby. And so many miracles happened. And shortly after that, when she came home after many months in hospital, that's actually then when the message came through where I was guided by one of my guides to use to work with just a frequency of crystals. And one day when she, I think she must have been two years old, and she was going to nursery. And everyone always said, oh, don't bring her to nursery. She'll, it's not good for her. She will always be sick. She'll have colds. She'll have all sorts. I think she was, she had the least colds of all of my children. But one day she had a, a, quite a bad cough. And they said, I'd have it checked, I'd have it checked. So I thought, okay, let's place the ethereal crystals before I go to the doctor. And I placed the frequency of, so I channeled the frequency of the tiger eye in her bronchi, the chalcedony in her lungs. So I worked with the frequencies of the crystals because I put, could put them inside of her body. Because, of course, where she wasn't well, that means she was on a low vibration. And when you put those high vibrations in there, it helps to heal it, so to lift it up. And when it's high enough, the, the physical illness can't be there because it's on a completely different vibration. And I did all that, and then I, because the nursery said, oh, I'll take her to the doctor. And I said, I'll, I'll take her to the doctor, just so he can tell me that she's fine. And I took her to the doctor, and he said, she'll be okay. Her lungs were clear, um, so had her checked, and she was. So I think it's still a collaboration between the medical and the energy world, because we are not far enough evolved. Yes, it will happen in certain cases. I've had absolute miracles. But in general, we are not, as a collective, far enough evolved to say we don't, no longer need the medical. So I think at the moment, this time in life on Earth, it's a beautiful combination, collaboration of both. And I do think as we talk about light and color, that it is in sound, medicine of the future, crystals too. I truly yeah. believe it. And I always laugh because I gave my children crystals and essential oils to go off to college with. That's what they said. And they still have their crystals. So yeah, laugh or not, but I have been a big believer in a long time. And I know with my house and bringing that energy in and just living with it. And one of the things that really helped me, and you do mention this in the book too, is Reiki energy. Once I became attuned to Reiki, and so I teach my students with 
with the energy of Reiki, because now they're feeling the subtle body to learn how to hold and feel and bring in the ethericals that you're, as you're talking about. So I think that's an important aspect too. We start to learn about our possibilities that universal life and bring it all together helps us to understand. Now you've also gone a step further and you create these essences. Tell us about that. I call them a little healer in your handbag. So I've actually got a few behind me here and I created them because they're like a step between the ethereal crystals and the physical. So it's, it's like a little helping tool. And they have in, been empowered with, attuned with a certain frequency of the frequency of a certain crystal to help you out. So depending on what it is that you need, for example, the rose quartz is for self-love or artists can spray in their room because it creates creativity. And so you can spray in your aura, you can spray in the room, if it's a relationship, for example, with families, certain patterns that really need to stop and you're the one who's seeing it and you're realizing it, you can just imagine your family line and spray the unikites between you, knowing with the intention of spraying them to cut the cords. And so, again, it's vibration. It doesn't matter that the person is not really in the room. It's all about that intention and raising uh, the vibration. And that's what the my essence is really help with a little healer in your handbag like the amethyst you go somewhere and the room feels uncomfortable just give it a few sprays and it helps to uplift yeah i call that a psychic protection too the amethyst <laughs> that's what I, I love to use that for too as well and then you talked about hematite too boundaries like good for caregivers good for healers good for nurses as you mentioned there too same idea creating that ethereal boundary around us too very important yeah, yeah. definitely mm -hmm. How exciting. Do you have a favorite crystal or favorite ethereal crystal? I don't. Mm, I do turquoise. That one pops in my head right now as well. I think it's a stunning crystal. The tourmaline, the watermelon tourmaline is actually a stunning image. Oh, that Al took for the book of the watermelon tourmaline. It's absolutely beautiful. But I think it, I don't really have a favorite one. People ask me as well, oh, how does that crystal look like? And I'm more like, I actually don't know because I work just with the frequency and I always have to go and look, how does it look like? Because I don't know. I would purely go on frequency because that, that really is fully where we're going. Very interesting. Very cool. So how does this relate to spirituality? Is it because we're working in higher vibration? I think at the end of the day, it's all about returning to who we really are, which is energy, high vibration. Things, of course, we're here to play, to learn, to connect, to do all of that. Can you remind me of your question again? Because I'm going off on one. <laughs> how does it relate? I think you it? answered it, but just how it relates to spirituality. Because sometimes people want to separate spirituality over here, right? But yet it is all what you've said. It helps us to remember who we are and to connect. Yeah. But to bring us in that alignment back again. Yeah. Yeah. I think even just working with Mother Earth. Sending energy out to her and being in that ethereal state of mind and that vibration right now we need it, right? And as everything starts to shift and uplift, there are a lot of dark forces that can come at us. So I think it helps also too, right? To keep those energy boundaries, as we were saying, and really recognize we are spirit. We are energy. We are connected. Absolutely, yeah. And Definitely the more, agree. of course, our, our vibration lifts, <clears throat> the, the, the less darkness there will be. So we could be creating this new world that we're going in. For sure. Definitely. So how exciting to have these essences to work with as well and to just really be able to see that vibration of energy around the crystals. I think it's so important. And I think this message for people to hear, it's not just about accumulating the physical properties, but really sitting with it. And I think that's important. I know I do that with my students is let's take some time in one crystal at a time and let's feel the different energies and let's notice, right? Because you can go read a book and get 10 different properties, but it's really the relationship that you create with it. That's how I see it. Yeah, I think you do too, yeah. for sure. Useful. Yeah, so what is your mission with this book and the work that you're doing? It, it to really bring the message to people that it's all about vibration. And the more we lift our vibration, the, the better we feel, the more health, happiness, success, money, will come into our lives so we can truly enjoy it in this world. We've done so much of all the other stuff 
coming back time and time again, it's time to really reconnect with that vibration, uplift it and really live an enjoyable life. Yeah, I so agree. I so agree. I think they had amusement. I always talk about bring them in for amusement and magnification. That seems to be the way I like to feel because I feel like those crystal beings in our aura and around us, they do give us a little sparkle. They give us a little uplifting and vibration. So I like to look at it that way as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, I don't think I go anywhere without either wearing something or a crystal in my pocket or in my purse. And I think, again, as we start to relate more and more to how they feel around us and feel honest, that's the message that you're bringing forward. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So where can we direct people to find you? What's going on? Do you teach your work? I do. Yes. I'm very much focused also on teaching the healers. The work that I've been doing and that is still evolving uh, I need to pass that on. So on my website, mariedelanota.net, you can find everything that I do. Uh, you can find the books because I have other books as well. You can find my soul sessions one-on-one. -on -one. I do space clearing and it's all remote with vibration because that really is what it is about. And all the courses as well because everything I have learned and practiced, I'm passing that on. Yeah, I agree. And a big shout out to Inner Traditions, Findhorn Press for the imprint of the book as well. They're awesome in what they do and help people like us, right? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And they've done a gorgeous job with the book. And they have. It, it is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I can't wait to really go through it now. Again, like I said, I just got it. And I had the galley, the digital, but this is a book you have to have in hand. I truly believe that. Some you can listen to and some you can get digitally, but this is definitely a book to have and to put into your library. So I definitely recommend that. So we have answered the question, but I would love for you to leave an uplifting thought with our listeners. How do you feel that working with the ethereal crystal healing can help empower the spirit right now? Well, it's all about bringing back that alignment and how do we bring the alignments that we're in alignment with spirit, with who we are, is by raising that vibration with that's ethereal right. crystals. <laughs> We need to. We definitely need to raise the vibrations and allow the mystical teachings of these ethereal crystals to really help us understand that we are all connected, right? I am the crystal. The crystal is me. We have that vibrational light. So what a beautiful message that you're bringing. And I love that you're really highlighting the idea of vibration and energy. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today to your spirit. Oh, it was wonderful being here. Thank you. Thank you too. Yeah. Namaste. Yes raising our vibration right now in humanity and holding that alignment for our highest good is so important. The mystical teachings of these etherical crystals can help us to understand that we are all connected. Slow down, create a connection with each of your crystals. It isn't about collecting and collecting, but more importantly, feeling and resonating with the vibrations the crystals offer us. Notice what you notice. All the links for Marie will be in the show. And I have so many exciting things coming up, like our Reiki Master Spiritual Retreat in Santa Fe and my Winter Akashic Records Reading Training. If you aren't on my email list, I'll put the link to my website, sign up, and get my free guide, Increase Your Energetic Sensitivity Guide. And don't forget about the Reiki Rays Healing Summit. I'll include that link as well. There are so many ways you can learn to work with your soul. A spiritual teacher is a great way to help you along this path. Don't wait for a crisis to get started. Schedule your complimentary spiritual breakthrough call with me. Thanks again for listening. I am your host, Terri Ann Hyman.